Hello and welcome to another educational video for CSEI 1300. My name is Joanna Fleming and we are continuing our discussion about the while loop. We came up with a way, a while loop way, to save Sisyphus from rolling the stone up the hill over and over again. We said Sisyphus is going to stop when the month will become October. So we can say while it's still September, while the month value is still 9, he will continue to roll the, st the stone up. We also realized that we needed to advance the date, otherwise we will never get to October and poor Sisyphus will be stuck, would be stuck rolling the stone up again and again and again. One of the things we put in here inside the wild loop body is a see out statement. It's, you know, serves a really good purpose, kind of like debugging, trying to um, insert see out statements to check values of variables. Debugging also helps you step through it and see how values of variable change. One of the things that you might want to do on your own without a debugger or without a see out statement when you're designing your solutions is to do a bit of hand tracing. It's also helpful when you are analyzing someone else's code. It's also helpful with a lot of the questions that you will encounter in quiz four, in week four, where we are going to need to hand trace a loop. What does hand tracing entail? Let me see if I can show you over here. So I created a little table for you. You can create this on a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a loop. It can be any part of your program. But what you basically want to do is you want to put line numbers here on this column, on the first column. And then up here, you want to look at what variables would you like to trace. Tracing basically meaning imagine that you have like a finger and you're following, you're tracing every line of your code one by one, right? What we are interested in is how our variables change values and sometimes how our conditions change, right? If we have a loop or if we have if statement, the condition is important as well. So we don't have that many variables. We have month. We have, well, actually, let's leave a little bit of space here. We have month, we have day of month. And then the condition we have is month is nine. Okay, there we go. Um, you know, you can start with line number one, but that wouldn't really make any sense because not a lot really happens on line number one. The first statement where something really happens is on line number seven. So you can put line number seven here. You can say on line number seven, the variable nine month becomes 9. On line number 8, the variable day of month becomes 15. Okay. On line number 9, the condition is executed. Month equal equal 9, meaning is the value of variable month 9? Well, all you have to do is go through your table above line 9 and see what is the latest value a variable month. Well, it's 9. So if it's 9, then this condition here will be true. Okay, we are continuing. Uh, nothing happens on 10, 11, 12, 13. On line 13, the value of day of month increases by 1. So I need to look at what's the latest value here, that's 15, and add 1 to it. And now this becomes 16. So from here on, the next, the rest of the program, I'm going to say this is the value of day of the month. Of course, until it changes again, right? There's going to be some printout. If you want, sometimes you can have here any sort of see out statement. You can say, okay, well, over here on line 14, okay, there's going to be a printout, a value 16, and then a space. Maybe we'll just write it like this, like a space, right? 16. Okay, on line 15, oh no, we need another um, we need another value here. We have another condition, and that is day of month equal 30th. Okay, kind of not getting really well here with the space, but you guys get the idea. Okay, day of month equals 30th is my next condition. So on line 15, that condition gets evaluated and day of month is value is 16 so this condition here will be false there we go okay then because this is false 
the next line to be executed, well, it's not 16, 17, 18, it's not 19, and now the while loop ends, and because the last time we checked the condition was true, we're going to go back up here and check the condition again. So in the flow of execution, the next line to be considered again is 9. On line 9, this condition is checked again. Month is still 9. This is still true. Okay, on line 13, there we go again. Day of month increments, it becomes 17. On line 14, the printout is 17 and a space. On line 15, the condition is evaluated. The value is 17. It's not going to equal 30, so it's still false. And then we keep going and we keep going and we keep going, right? Until at some point, let's see what happens. Let's go with on line 9. The condition is still true. Okay, on line 13, day of the month will become 30th. Okay, on line 14, we will be printing. 30th and a space. Okay. On line 15, the condition will be evaluated, and this is finally 30th, and this condition will become true, which means the next line to be executed will be 17. Right? We didn't have 17 before because we never got into this if branch because this condition was always false. For the first time, this is true. We're executing line 17, month becomes instead of 9, 10, okay? And then while loop ends, here we have to check the condition again. The condition will be for the first time here false, which means this whole thing is skipped. The condition is false. We don't execute anymore. The next thing to execute is line 21, where we are printing... Uh, Sisyphus out. Okay, this whole process is called hand tracing. It's very useful. It's very useful to see, you know, how the variables change. Sometimes you get questions, you know, like in quiz four or like maybe on the practicum where they will say, what are the values of the variables at the end of the while loop? Well, you do your hand tracing table and at the end of the while loop, when we finally end up on line 21, you just look and say, what are the latest values that I had where month was 10, days of month was 30th, right? So those would be the values at the end of the while loop. Another thing that that um, questions might ask you, how many times do the f will the following while loop execute? Well, you will know how many times based on how many times the condition was evaluated to true. We skipped a few things here. There was a whole bunch going on that we could have gone um, quite a few times. But, you know, try it at home, do the whole thing and figure out how many times did this while loop get executed? How many more times did poor Sisyphus had to roll the stone up? It's called hand tracing again. It's good for debugging. It's good for you to try to figure out before you write your code, how would you like this to go? When will the condition turns to false? When will the while loop end? And so on. I hope you enjoyed our video. Thank you. See you soon.